Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So, you know, today we'll be working on the integration between browser use and Gemini. So, if at all you guys wanted to automate your uh, browser tasks, you know, like finding the funniest edit comment, tracking prices, or even filling out forms automatically, well, uh, you can do it using uh, browser use and Gemini for free. So, very specifically, we are, be we are gonna be using Gemini 2.0 Flash experiment. So yeah, let's start up with the installation first. So if you already want to know how it works or like, you know, the visualization on how it's going to work, then you guys can go at the end of the video and see how the browser task happens. Yeah, let's get started. As you guys can see, this is the GitHub page for browser use. <clears throat> they're well, they have given it well documented and stuff like that. You guys can go through. And if you go into examples, and yeah, you can see models. You can use various models that can be used. So I'm very specifically going to use Gemini. Then when you go to notebooks, no, sorry, to use cases. Well, these are the use cases that you can use the yeah, the agents for. I have uploaded. Online coding agent, this is what I made. You guys can check it out if you're interested in. And these are not the only limitations you guys can go beyond. These are the ones that have been uploaded on GitHub. Okay, so yeah, let's get started with the um, setup. So first, uh, you gotta open your code editor, your favorite code editor. I would prefer Visual Studio. Uh, Visual Studio Code, yeah. So pulling up the terminal, now, before that, make sure you have installed Python 3.11 or above and generate an API key from Google. So AI Studio Google. Uh, you click on this and you get key here. You can uh, generate a uh, Gemini key. Then also, yeah, there are much more installations. Let's go it. So before doing all of that, you guys got to create a virtual environment. Um, so it's going to be, and then you got to activate the environment. Yeah, now, so why we're creating a virtual environment so that, you know, uh, the installations that you're going to do is going to be very specific to this project and very specific to this folder. So it doesn't clash with, uh, you know, the versions of your local devices. For example, we might need Python 3.11 or above for this specific project, but you have been working on a project that requires Python 3.7. So when you install it on your system, then there might be some clashes. So it's better you go with a virtual environment. And then yeah, now let's start installing the important packages. So pip install, browser use, then lang chain google gen ai then python dot env then file and text yeah you're kind of working satisfying requirement okay i'll just Upgrade it. Oh, let's try installing Python separately. Python book. Yeah. Uh, Generally, this code should work for you guys because my pip wasn't upgraded. I had to rerun the Pydantic again, reinstall it. So now comes one of the important part. We have to install Playwright, install Chromium. Yeah, done. Now we're going to create new file dot env. We're going to create an env file gemini api key i've already uh stored my uh i've already generated a key and stored it here i will be using that you guys should go to ai studio 
and uh, generate a key. Let's create main.py. Yeah, that's it for the setup. Now let's jump into the coding or maybe I'll give you a walkthrough. Well, I'll walk you through the code now. So we have done some inputs. So here you can see load.env. Here's where the API key we're getting from this .env file. Make sure that this name and this name are the same because that's how it's going to access your API key. Uh, then here you can see that we are specifically using Gemini 2.0 flash experiment. <clears throat> and then here is the main part. So this is the task or the prompt you're going to give it to the agent. So it can be anything like literally anything that you can do with the browser. But for now, let's be very focused and work on the find the lowest price for Arctic 4090 on Amazon. So as the variable name suggests, max, max actions per step. First step can take only four actions and then maximum it can only take 25 uh, steps or yeah, maximum 25 steps. And then we run it. There's pretty much you just have to change this part for your um, coding or the use of the agent. I forgot to close the string. Oh, let's run the Python dot name dot py. Oh, no model name dot env. I did install it. Didn't I? Yeah, great. Now it's going to start. You can see that agent starting task, find the lowest price. Now it uses Chromium. So I guess there, there's Google Chrome and access to Mozilla Firefox. Yeah, you can see it searches Arctic's 1490 price on Amazon. I'm not touching the device. I'm not touching the laptop. It's just doing it on its own. Hands back. And it really goes to Amazon, checks for the price. I can also scroll through. It has to like uh, analyze each page. Now it's done with Amazon and it's got some values. It has stored it. I can go back and front. It's a little bit, it's a little bit problematic when, you know, you get the capture. So I guess it's done. So you go back and check here. Yeah, task completed successfully. And here is the price. The lowest price for RTX 490 found on Google is, I guess it converted dollars into, yeah. On a GitHub. Okay, and you can see each step. So the final step was step 11. There you can, it found the result. And before that, step nine goes, Okay, you go, you guys saw the Amazon error uh, page that was step nine. So the, it can go up to a maximum of 25. I mean, it's customizable. You can make it to 50 or 100, depends on your wish. And then, yeah, pretty much that's it. This is how browser automation works. Not automation, yeah, then browser AI, or AI agent. <clears throat> yeah, so um, again, I'm gonna em emphasize on this fact because this, like, this is the most important line this is the agent prompt and it defines what the AI will do. And uh, change you can change the text for any web task like finding articles, submitting forms, or gathering data. So it worked well for price tracking, then you can use it for research tasks and form automation, then report generation, like pretty much whatever you want to, there's no limit to it. Then yeah. 
So if at all you guys happen to run into any issues, yeah, I have script to the side. I'm looking and talking. So if at all you have any issues, then you know, uh, I'll give you like some issues that you might go through. So first is all pip installation. Make sure that all of your uh, uh, modules are properly installed. Then ensure that you have given the right API key and the name of Gemini API key is same on the .env file and the main.py file. Then if at all you get an error in Playwright install, uh, maybe you can use this code too. If your Playwright dot installed properly. Or so this, this is the code you guys got to use if the Playwright is not uh, installed. And then, um, yeah, also make sure that your Python is about 3.11. That's where all of these are supported. So yeah, guys, that's it for today. I uh, hope you guys would have learned something. Yeah, hope you guys would have learned something. And uh, yeah, pretty much that's it. So please do. No, I'm not going to say that. So yeah, cool then. That's it, finally. Meet you in the next video. Maybe my next video is going to be on... MCP, a model context protocol from, created by uh, created by Claude. So I'll try running it on Olama and upload a video. Bye then. See ya guys. Bye bye.